Today on RC Overload, we're going to be talking a little bit about the slipper clutch system. How it works, how to adjust it, and some things to look out for when it's worn out or broken. Yeah, we're going there. What's up guys? Welcome back to RC Overload. And yes, today we are going back to the basics of how to adjust your slipper clutch system. Now I know most of you guys already know how to adjust the slipper clutch system. You already know how it works, things to look out for and so forth. But there's still a lot of new people that come into this hobby looking for answers. And I've lately had quite a few people come in asking me what's wrong with my truck and it usually ends up being the slipper clutch system. Now I know that's kind of vague. There's a lot of things that could go wrong. But so how does the slipper clutch system actually work? Well, it's pretty simple. Basically, it takes the power from the motor and delivers it to the wheels. But with the clutch and the backing plate, it allows it to slip so that initial power when you're giving it throttle doesn't destroy the drivetrain parts. It allows the system to slip a little bit before it engages. That, hence the name slipper clutch. Now, the slipper clutch system ultimately works with some basic components. You have a locking nut, a spring, slipper pads and a backing plate. Now each manufacturer is a little bit different in how they go about designing and setting up their slipper clutches. Everybody uses different adjustments as well. So ultimately, how do you adjust it? How do you know how much pressure should actually be applied to the slipper clutch system? Well, there's really no right or wrong answer. And I'll be the first one to say that. Some people will say it needs to be precise. It needs to be not too much, not too little. Well, they're right, but everybody has a different preference in driving. But I'm gonna tell you what those extremes are if it's too tight or if it's too loose. Ultimately, if you have your slipper adjustment setting set too loose, you're gonna find that your car is gonna sound and do something similar to this. It's too tight. It's locked down, there's no slipping action going on whatsoever from your car or truck. It's going to do just the opposite. Yeah, I know, that looks a lot more fun. It actually is. Having your slipper clutch set too tight could potentially cause ex uh, excessive wear on the drivetrain parts could potentially break drivetrain parts especially when you put it under a lot of load for a long period of time or you get into a situation where the car's stuck and you try to get it out of that area without just picking it up and moving it you could also potentially break the parts if it's too tight now if it's too loose you could actually burn out the slipper clutch system causing too much heat in there the car is ultimately not going to have the power that you want. So in a sense, yes, having it set just right is important, but I myself like to have my slipper clutch adjustments a little more on the tighter side. Not fully locked down, but a little more on the tighter. I want that wheelie action. I want that high speed action out of it. I also have been driving cars for a long period of time, so I know how to apply the throttle just enough so it doesn't put a lot of strain on the drivetrain parts. So if you do lock yours down a little more, just remember to go a little bit easier on the throttle so you're less likely to break drivetrain parts in the end. Now, what are some of these problems that people are coming into the store with? Well, a lot of the times I hear things like, I went to go drive my truck the other day and it just won't wheelie anymore. It, I, I give it a full throttle and it just slowly takes off. Or it doesn't move. I hear this whining noise coming from it and it's just not moving. It's, it's like barely moving. But when I pick the back end up, the wheels spin. So what's going on? Those are all the most common symptoms of a loose slipper clutch system. You want to check that your lock nut is set to where the manufacturer recommended specs are. You can usually find those in your owner's manual. But if you don't have your owner's manual, you can also just have a general setting. I usually put all my trucks, if I don't know what the setup is, to about one and a half turns out from being completely locked down. And what that means is take that lock nut, just lock it down completely. Then back it out about a turn and a half to maybe even two turns. Then go out, test it, see if it's too loose or too tight and adjust from there. Now the cool part is most transmission setups have a case 
little cover, so to speak, that goes over the pinion and spur gear. They usually have like a little rubber grommet, like you see here, that's easy enough to pop off when you're driving. They will allow you to get your get access to your lock nut to be able to adjust that on the fly. Now, sometimes you may even run into a situation where you're driving it, driving it, and all of a sudden the car just it goes loose. <laughs> Well, that kind of sucks, but what, what happened? Well, besides the slipper pads that could potentially just wear out over time, the number one cause that I see on slipper clutch systems is that the locking nut actually backed off from its spot. Now, with all the abuse that we give it, the amount of power that we're put into this, the elements that we're running these cars in, ultimately, the rubber grommet that's inside the lock nut is gonna eventually wear down. And for those of you that don't know what the lock nut is, with the rubber grommet, that rubber grommet is designed to actually hold that lock nut in place so that it doesn't come loose. But ultimately, that rubber grommet is gonna wear out and you're gonna need to replace that lock nut once in a great while. One of the ways to test that to see if it is your lock nut that is backing out is re-tighten down the adjustments and see after a couple of runs if it's coming back loose again. If it's doing it repeatedly, just simply go out, get a new lock nut, new spring too while you're at it because usually they come in little kits and just replace it and you'll find that it's going to fix all your problems. So to conclude this, a lot of drivetrain problems can tend to go towards the slipper clutch. So always double check your slipper clutch adjustments. Make sure you read the owner's manual to find out what it's supposed to be set at and then go from there. Take it out, exp you know, Feel it out a little bit, tighten it up a little bit more than it should, or loosen it up a little bit more than it should. This way you know what to expect when you encounter those situations, uh, or you might just find that you like your setting set to a little looser, or set your, your setting set to a little tighter. Go out, play around with it, don't be afraid. You're not going to break anything by trying it out for the first couple of times and experimenting. It's when you have things set for a long period of time that things could potentially break. But, hey, things are designed to break, things are designed to wear out. It's part of the RC process, that's why everything is replaceable on these. So, that's it for now you guys. If you have any more questions related to the slipper clutch system, or anything more that you want to know about this, feel free to leave me a comment in the comment box below. If you think this video is helpful to somebody, hit the like button and then share it to them. And if you aren't subscribed, be sure to subscribe by hitting that subscribe button and then the bell so you'll get notified about my next video, which should be coming soon, hopefully soon. But that's it for now, you guys. All right, I'll see you guys on the next RC Overload. Later!